Hi everyone, we're in the fantastic surroundings of the Botanic Garden at Cambridge University and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the best herbs for women's health. Problems affecting the female reproductive tract are amongst the most common conditions that we can find presenting in a herbal medicine clinic. And the solutions are not always obvious or not, e or not always easy to find in standard medicine. And so women quite often come to herbalists and other natural health practitioners for the solutions to these problems. Problems can start quite young in life. They can start as soon as you start menstruating, period pains, premenstrual syndrome for example, uh, particularly mood changes around the time of the month. Then of course as you get older you start worrying maybe about fertility and that can be a big issue these days. A lot of people presenting with problems with conceiving. And then of course at the end of the reproductive cycle, the menopause, the so-called change of life. And we find that the changes that occur at this time in a woman's life can be demanding on a number of different levels. And we find that herbs have the capacity and the complexity to deal with these various levels of discomfort and dysfunction that women might be faced with at that time of life. This plant is motherwort and as the name immediately suggests it might have something to do with mothering. In fact it's said to get its name from the fact that the ancient Greeks used it specifically to relieve anxiety associated with giving birth. Its Latin name is actually Leonurus cardiaca. Leonurus having something to do with a lion, well, apparently the spikes of flowers look a bit like a lion's tail and the leaves look a bit like claws. But that isn't really the kind of uh, the side of things we're going to bring out, although that last name, Cardiaca, suggests that it has something to do with the heart as well. It turns out that this plant is one of the best heart protective plants. That's not why we're here to talk about it, but it is worth saying that that aspect of relieving anxiety is obviously heart protective as well. And actually when you think about it, the heart's a very important organ generally for us in terms of our mood. Uh, the, the Chinese, for example, would, would tell us that the spirit is housed in the heart. So that gives this plant the possibility of dealing with things that have a more kind of emotional or spiritual basis and that includes things like for example premenstrual tension uh, so this is a plant that's very very good at dealing with premenstrual tension when it has an emotional component to it now in terms of the female reproductive system we would call this plant an emenagogue and that means uh, a plant that helps or a medicine that helps to uh, start the menstrual flow. So it's very useful in cases where the menstrual flow is a bit stagnant or it's a bit delayed and you want to bring it on a little bit quicker um, and also by the way for expelling the placenta after birth as well. So it's, it's very much about uh, getting stuff out of the uterus when it doesn't need to be there anymore. Now when it comes to how to take motherwort, uh, my recommendation is that you go with a pre-prepared supplement like a capsule of the dried herb or a tincture. And the reason for that is because uh, if you prepare a tea out of it, it's actually quite bitter. It's not that pleasant to take unless you're really committed, in which case that would be a good thing to do. You know, you can actually make a tea out of it, an infusion, so it's very simple to make, but it's going to be bitter, uh, it's fair to say. So if you're taking a, a tincture uh, of a normal strength, we would say sort of one in two, that's a, 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 a gauge of the ratio of plant to liquid, uh, that's a standard tincture if you like. We're talking about something like um, two to four mils three times a day and the two to four it sounds like a big dose range but it doesn't matter if you have too much it's not going to overdo anything this is not a plant that is particularly toxic in any degree so you might feel a bit relaxed if you take too much but that's all that's going to happen um, but the real the real reason why we say two to four mils is because sometimes we have a mild effect that we need um, sometimes it depends for example on the size of the person or the build of the person um, so it might be to do with that or to do with the severity of the condition uh, but if you were taking like half a teaspoon you'd be in about the right ballpark. So motherwort, a fantastic herb for women's health. Let's go find some more. Here we have ladies mantle, alchemilla, 
Actually, we usually use Alcamilla vulgaris, and this is Alcamilla mollis. They're very close species, and mollis will do the same thing. This is a plant that is characterised by what we might call its astringency. And that word astringency means binding and toning. So we call this a uterine tonic or a uterine astringent, which means, of course, that it can prevent unwanted bleeding. Bleeding that happens at the wrong time of the cycle or over prolific bleeding, heavy bleeding, uh, whether it's associated with the period or, of course, um, in menopause, we have a condition called menopausal menorrhagia, which means uncontrolled bleeding. And that is really the signature for this plant, to stop uncontrolled discharges or blood loss, which, of course, apart from being inconvenient and unpleasant, can also be dangerous in the sense that it can lead towards anemia or blood deficiency. So this is a plant that helps to strengthen and tighten the uterus, thus preventing excessive discharges. But it can also help during pregnancy, for example. Now you have to be a bit careful when using herbs in pregnancy. It's one of the major um, class classifications or categories of contraindications with herbs. And you might say, because it tightens the uterus, that this herb might be contraindicated in pregnancy. So only use it in pregnancy under the advice of a herbalist. Now it's called ladies' mantle, because, I mean, the lady part of it obviously suggests that it might be something to do with the female reproductive tract, but the real reason that it's called ladies' mantle is because of the shape of the leaf, which, if you look at it very closely, resembles a kind of lovely, uh, prolific, wraparound uh, cloak of the kind that maybe Victorian women used to wear. Um, the other thing about the leaf, and we don't have that to show you here, but it, in the early morning you can sometimes find drops of water collecting on the surface of the leaf. This is not dew, this is something called guttation, which means that the water that's being drawn up from the ground by the plant is then transpiring, as we call it, uh, or exiting the plant via small openings in the surface of the leaf. So what's the best way to use ladies' mantle? Well, it is, as we say, a herb. Now, everything's a herb, isn't it, in herbalism? But when we say herb in herbalism, we specifically mean plants where you use everything above the ground. Usually these will be harvested just as the flowers were coming out, so before they go to seed, for example, uh, or bear fruits, because that would put all of the energy into the seed or the fruit and not into the leaf and the flower where we need it. So anything above the ground, and you can pick this, you can, and by the way, it's fantastic to grow. It makes a great border plant. You can see that here. You can grow it in your own garden. Uh, harvest it for, for your own use. You should dry the plant first, um, so lay it out to dry and then once it's dried, chop it up and you can use maybe a handful of that per cup of hot water as a very, very simple infusion. Of course, if you don't want to do that, you can also get it as a pre-prepared extract. And the dose would be according to need, really, but I've used quite high doses in certain circumstances of this plant, as much as maybe five or ten mils, three, four, five or even six times daily if you've got really serious bleeding going on. So that's Lady's Mantle a uterine tonic, uterine astringent. So behind me here, in the middle of this border, we have my top herb for female reproductive problems. This is Vitex agnus castus, chaste tree, also known as monk's tree, and monk's pepper, and we'll find out why that is in a, a short while. Now, the reason that this is really the queen of herbs in this category is because it works on everything, because it works on the actual overall hormone balance. It's what we might call a hormone balancer or a hormone modulator. So instead of talking about individual hormones and levels of individual hormones, we're, here we're considering the overall balance of the different hormones in the female re reproductive system. So we might be talking about estrogen progesterone, for example, and one of the things that this plant does that makes it so special and so useful is that it addresses the estrogen progesterone balance. Most female reproductive disorders are characterised by a dominance of estrogen. And there are other things, by the way, that we should be doing about that if it's the case as well. But to bring progesterone levels up, you also have to do things like reduce prolactin, uh, increase luteinizing hormone, decrease follicular stimulating hormone, and a number of, of other rather complex operations. And you don't really have to think about doing all of that because this plant will do it all for you. So 
it's a hormone balancer and as such of course it has a, a role to play in con most conditions that we might encounter in the female reproductive cycle from difficult periods, uh, loss of periods or lack of periods, uh, painful periods, uh, too much blood or heavy periods, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome which of course is based on dominance of androgens or male hormones, we'll come back to that in a moment, and of course endometriosis as well. And if that weren't enough it's also the key herb for treating menopause too. Now because it does all of those things and has such a widely beneficial effect on the female reproductive tract it's also a top herb for fertility. And one of the things you could do if you want to get pregnant, whether or not you've been having trouble conceiving, uh, it would benefit any woman planning to get pregnant to do a short course of Vitex Agnus Castus just to make sure that all the hormones and everything was exactly where it needs to be for conception. Now, we've emphasized that it has the ability particularly to reduce androgens. Now, all women have male hormones in the same way that all men have female hormones, but when they get too high in the mix, then we can have problems. Uh, as I mentioned, polycystic ovarian syndrome, for example. And that can cause problems like acne and unwanted hair on the face. So it's a really important thing to be able to help women with, because obviously their self-confidence is going to be really knocked by having a condition like that. So we really want to do something that has an overall balancing effect in order to address that particular problem. And by the way, it also works quite well on teenage boys who have acne too. And this brings me to the reason it's called monk's pepper, because monks, of course, are supposed to be celibate. So what you want to do with a monk is to make sure he doesn't have quite so much of the male hormones uh, available. So you can see that this one actually isn't in flower. Uh, at the moment, which is a shame. It produces these quite long, quite impressive spikes of purplish pinky flowers when it's, uh, when, it's, when it's blooming. And these obviously in time give way to the berry. The berry, the berry and the seed are the part that we use medicinally speaking. Now you can buy Vitex berries. Uh, they're very hard. They need cooking up. You need to be making a decoction of these as well. But actually the easiest and simplest way to dose yourself with Vitex Agnus Castus, and anybody can try this, any woman with any kind of menstrual or female reproductive problem should try this, um, and that's to take a fluid extract uh, or a tincture, this is uh, a concentrated liquid extract of the berry of the plant, and take just one dose daily in the morning before anything else passes your lips. Little uh, drops in water will do fine. Generally, we're talking about, depending on the, the strength of the uh, preparation that you've got, we're talking between 20 and 40 drops per dose. And it's just a once per day dose. You don't have to think about it after that, job done. So there we have it, my number one top herb for the female reproductive system, Vitex Agnus Castus. So there we have it, some of the best herbs for women's health. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And if you have any suggestions for other herbs or other topics that you'd like us to cover, please pop them in the comments below. I'll see you on the next one.